the Wall Street Journal with an amazing piece that caught my eye last night. So we had to have one of the reporters on it. How one tweet turned pro-China trolls against the NBA, written by Georgia Wells, Tom McGinty, and our next guest, Ben Cohen, from the Wall Street Journal. How are you, Ben? I am okay. Thanks for having me on. You got it. So lay it out for me. What did, what did you uh, endeavor here in this article for those who might not have read it? Well, we wanted to see exactly what happened once Daryl Morey pressed send on that infamous tweet about 10 days ago and was quickly swarmed by replies and, you know, became like, you know, the most interesting man in geopolitics for a few days, shockingly. And, um, you know, I think anyone with eyes could see that these accounts that were telling him that uh, his mother was dead and had zero followers and had never tweeted before, there was something fishy going on here. And so what we were able to do um, using um, the data from a couple of Clemson University researchers was analyze about 170,000 tweets that were sent at him over the course of a week after um, that first tweet. And what we found was that uh, a startling, um, sort of astonishing number of them came from accounts with zero followers, came from accounts that didn't exist uh, until he sent that first tweet. And what people uh, who look at this for a living, these disinformation researchers say, is that you know they have never seen anything like this that is not affiliated with a state operation. And so essentially that these were pro-China trolls, not just bots, but like, you know, possibly even humans at a keyboard um, who were uh, sort of targeting him in this harassment campaign meant to manipulate the conversation um, about China and Hong Kong. So, you know, this, that, that tweet started this whole thing. And, and, you know, this whole thing has just sort of been um, so misunderstood and, and, and hard to grasp in real time. And so, you know, just looking at exactly what happened from the beginning and putting some numbers to it and actually crunching uh, the data seemed like a pretty good place to start. And so what did the, what does the data tell you, Ben? Uh, does it, it does it point in the direction? I, obviously, the Chinese government must have been the ones to orchestrate all this. Has that is that fingerprint been discovered? This? Well, that's what it appears. I mean, it's hard. It's hard to. Um, uh, it's hard to say that definitively. What, what one of the researchers says is that he's only, you know, he's only seen this type of behavior when it is state-backed. But you know, just looking at the numbers, it's um, they kind of speak for themselves. I mean, 50% of these tweets uh, that were sent at him had came from accounts with fewer than 13 followers. Like m- almost 4,000 tweets didn't even. Almost 4,000 of the accounts didn't even exist until he sent his first tweet. I mean. And so, you know, he, he was bombarded by 170,000 tweets that at, at the peak of this troll activity, they were appearing at his phone at a rate of like nearly two per second, which, you know, you, you just think about like if you're actually trying to keep up with your Twitter replies on your phone to get 170,000. I mean, it's just astonishing. And, and the fact that... Um, so many of them seem to uh, spout um, pro-China rhetoric, so um, you know, an anti-Hong Kong sentiment. When the organic discussion, if you take out those accounts uh, that had zero followers and appear to be linked with China, it, it's actually the opposite. There was a lot of support for Daryl Morey and a, uh, a lot of support for the Hong Kong protest. So they were trying to make it seem like this discourse was balanced when, in fact, it really was not. Ben Cohen, Wall. Street Journal columnist here on the Rich Eisen Show. So uh, if we are assuming then that it was state backed, the question is, is what's the chicken or the egg here? Is it is it that uh, the Chinese government saw this or a member of the Chinese government saw this and then immediately got approval to hit send uh, from all of these bots or from this disinformation campaign to back what they were going to do with the NBA? Or did all of this stuff happen by a proxy and then the government just came in and 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 wanted to use this for whatever campaign they have uh, against Hong Kong. Uh, I'm I'm wondering what 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 to make of all your information here, Ben. Yeah, I mean, it's a fascinating question, Rich, and I have to admit that as an NBA reporter, I was not all that um, uh, well briefed on, um, you know, Chinese disinformation campaigns until last week, so I'm not um, entirely an expert on this, but um, 
I think what's interesting here is that this effort uh, aligns with you know China's state institutions breaking with the NBA and the Rockets at around the same time. So if you remember, I mean, the the uh, I know it was only ten days ago now or two weeks, but the you know the the, the big streaming network there, state television, both cut ties with the Rockets. The 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 uh, People's Daily, the the Communist Party newspaper, and I, and I know that it's absurd to be talking about this on on uh, you know a show about uh, sports and no, this but is... it's just it's 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 wild that we're like talking about like communist newspapers and how they attacked an NBA general manager but, and yeah. all of this sort of happened at the same time. So it's hard to sort of. Uh, separate all this stuff because it does appear to be um, an institutional push, and it's sort of hard in America to wrap our heads around the fact that um, all of these um, all of these sports institutions in China are backed by the government, right? These they sort of um, move as one. Um, so, um, so I, I you know I, I think that. This Twitter campaign was probably part of it. You know, we this is what the evidence suggests, right? I mean, we can't say definitively, but I, I think if you sort of look at the numbers um, and use your brain, that's you know, that's that's how you come out thinking about this. For more of the Rich Eisen show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on Direct TV for free on BR Live, or download the Rich Eisen show app.